Trash Over, the show that discusses all the masterpieces and trash the pieces of genre cinema. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And it's our third Pride Month episode. Yeah, back again. You're right. Back, back, back again. Back, 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 back again. Four episodes in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we are here today to talk about one of my favourite modern slasher films. Uh, so I'm really happy to be covering it on the podcast because... This month we've covered some good films. This not often that happens, is it? It's nice. It's, it's been nice. Not counting The Brotherhood, of course. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's good. In it has its audience. Um, but of course, as you know, we are joined by special guests for each of our Prime Month episodes. And uh, for this week's special guest, we have one of my favourite podcasts, a, a podcast that is hilarious, ridiculously entertaining, uh, way more professional than us. Uh, they contain <laughs> the best audio clips and the scariest grinder stories. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's the Liams from their queer. Hello. Hi. Hey. Thank you for having us. It's it's thank good. You. I'm excited to be on. This is a great yeah, podcast. Thank you for joining us. Um, I've been a uh, I've been listening since your Hellraiser episode, which I had a lot of fun with. Um, made me realise how much I want to, like, throughout my life, I've always wanted to do Passage del Terror and Blackpool, and I still haven't done it. You've and not. So, no, I've always oh, wanted great. to do it so badly. <laughs> but this isn't it's, a Pasha Style yeah. Terror podcast, sorry. <laughs> yeah, tangent number one, sorry. <laughs> tangent number one. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's thank... a lot of fun. Yeah, it's, it's it really is. good. And that was a really... You know, we had some very random special guests last year. I mean, great guests if you're still listening. Um, but we, we <laughs> it's it's quite quite a selection, weren't it? We had the directors and scare actors. <laughs> I used to yeah. be a scare actor myself. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, at uh, Alton Towers. Mm. Oh. Um, yeah. These so, yeah. are everywhere, aren't they? Yeah, we are. <laughs> we get everywhere. <laughs> 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 Beautiful. But no, thank you so much for having us on. Uh, when we got the invite, we were really, really excited. I remember you gave us that list of films and me and Liam debated it for a good hour, just being like, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then yeah, there was a lot to choose from. Yeah, uh, we don't look at any of them really. <laughs> but yeah, I think what what settled it for us is this film is so much fun that how yeah. could we not discuss it? Yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. And I, the, the choices that have been made this year have, have all been great, haven't they? Um, you know, we've got Basic Instinct. We're doing Killer Condom next week. Um, <laughs> Incredible. I mean, I can't <laughs> wait for that episode to be quite um, honest. But yeah, no. <laughs> This this film is great. Um, but before we get into the film, uh, tell us what got you guys into horror and what made you want to start a podcast. Um, well, I suppose I, I've been making horror films for a good while now. Um, I started back in like two thousand and nine with Super Freak Media, uh, which is is my production company, and I met the other Liam through through that because you were acting at the time, weren't you? So. Um, he played some some creepy characters in that uh, so we've known each other obviously for a good while and i think it was kind of towards the end of lockdown we were looking like for a new project i know we'd been speaking to each other about doing something like queer mm-hmm. uh, centric uh, for a while um so i approached you liam and asked if you wanted mm-hmm. to to take the reins and host the podcast so yes you did yeah i've um been a horror fan for as long as I can remember. Um, I always attribute it to my nana worked at Blockbuster, so I had access to all those incredible like covers and stuff. Um, but yeah, when this podcast started, it's I was going to start one off on my own, and then I realised I didn't, I didn't know what the hell I was doing in terms <laughs> of editing or anything like that. And all the ideas were there. So when Liam reached out to me about doing it, I was like buying his hand off. Um, yeah, and we just we just have a lot of fun, and it's it's nice because there's no like difference. I'm sorry if you can hear that. A drill just started as soon what as I start. <laughs> Somebody's just decided to start drilling. It's drill a killer. <laughs> oh dear. So I'll try and talk <laughs> talk over that. It's me. I first switched the vibrator and accidentally <laughs> started. <laughs> Say, that's what I thought it was. I thought you were going to start smiling. <laughs> uh, I've already got a sausage roll. I don't need that. But um, no, yeah. So when you approached me about it, I was really happy because obviously Liam has the a good ear and a good skill for editing is the word I was looking for. But yeah, um, and it's nice because there's no difference between what we're like on the podcast and then what we're like in real life. In fact, I'd quite I'd, I'd say I'm a bit more diluted 
and the podcast yeah. on Emma Real Life. Which yeah, is maybe scary. if you listen if you listen back to some episodes, that can be quite jarring. Um, you have made me realise I am more of a rose now, so thank you. <laughs> yes, you definitely are. Um, there's um, there's a lot that you probably don't hear on the podcast, which I, I don't know. One day we might release like. A, a blooper reel podcast episode because there's a lot that we cut out <laughs> so oh. <laughs> if you think Phil. it's bad now yeah i was gonna say just <laughs> you just you just wait and see <laughs> our podcast is a blooper reel <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna uh, we do a special episode of the good bit <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah we're nice for everyone <laughs> Episode, like here's what you've been missing out on. <laughs> um, no, I think your, your podcast is it is really great, and it is nice to you know to know that you guys are the exact same as you are in the episodes. Um, it, it really does make a difference, and and I've said it time and time again. You know, the more queer podcasts, the better. I mean, you know, mm. as a as a kid, when you know when when I was a closeted kid, I would have loved to have had something like your podcast to listen to because. It's just, it's nice to know other gay people have the same interests and such. And, you know, your humour is very much similar to ours as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, very similar <laughs> reference points, I feel. In- incredible. Well, I think we're going to get on with you guys, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> but no, thank you for the kind words. It means it means a lot. Thank Not you. No problem at all. Uh, uh, have you got anything else you'd like to ask? Uh, no, no. And only regarding the film, but we're getting oh, into okay. that. Right. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Stop <laughs> looking at my nose. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, so, of course, today we are here to discuss Freaky, released in 2020, directed by Christopher Landon, the director of Happy Death Day 1 and 2, Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse, Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones, and Burning Palms. Uh, he is also the writer of Another Day in Paradise, Boys Life Free. Nice. Um, not as good as Boys Life 1 and 2. Uh, no, no. I thought Boys Life 4 was the best. Oh, okay. Time travel. I, like, I like West Life. <laughs> oh, yeah, but isn't Boys, boys Life... Like boys super life super I thought yeah. Boys Life, yeah, that's what I thought. I thought you were yeah. on about... I thought you were on about... They did some tour movie together, so... Yeah, yeah. London is actually... Uh, he's doing choreography for Boys Life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do they have choreography? Oh. <laughs> See, this is where we'd insert the shades button sound effects, right? <laughs> Can anyone do it? <laughs> I don't know. That's. <laughs> um, Blood, the wrote Blood and Chocolate, Disturbia, um, Paranormal Activity, the sequels, uh, and Highway to Heaven. But it's also written by uh, Michael Kennedy who is part of the Attack of the Queer Wolf podcast. Oh, nice. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Anyone who didn't know. Anyone who didn't know. Um, Christopher Landon, good director. I, yeah. I haven't watched the Happy Death Day films, um, but I have watched Scout's Guide to the Apocalypse, which I, I really like. I didn't realise he'd done that. Um, now knowing that, I can I can see it. If you get me, but yeah, yeah. Happy, happy yeah. Death Day one and two. I've I've not watched. I've been told to, but um, mm. yeah, I, d- I don't know why I haven't yet. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah, very, very good. Yeah. I feel like he's very recognisable as a director. Like mm. he has certain like visual motifs that you see pulled through. I mean, if you do watch Happy Death Day one and two after this, I think you'll very much see that they're similar to Freaky in a lot of ways. Mm. Uh, I just think Freaky leans into the blood and gore and the horror a lot more well isn't that uh, one isn't that one groundhog day and this, yeah. freaky, that and this one's freaky my question. yeah <laughs> sorry so this is the question gary <laughs> reference oh, so if groundhog day yeah. became uh happy death day the jamie lee curtis classic freaky friday became freaky <laughs> what other the parent trap do you <laughs> think Christopher Landon should make into slashes. The parent trap. The parent absolutely. trap. I agree. Yeah. I think would be parent great. Tra- yeah. But yeah. still with still with Lindsay Lohan. But just oh, an yeah. evil yeah. evil Lindsay Lohan and yeah. a. <laughs> nice well, did did you ever Lohan. see that scary twin film she did? I know who killed me or something. We like did that. a podcast episode. Oh, on yeah. episode we did. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that may have already been done because it's oh, quite but... similar. <laughs> yeah. What is what is another one that could be done? Herbie. Oh, that's Christine. Um, 
<laughs> I'm just thinking of Lindsay Lohan films. I was going to say 13 going on 30 yeah. might be one. But oh, yeah, I'd... big. Yeah. They could do big. Yeah. Oh, big. That's a good one. Well, apparently he's making, uh, with uh, with the same writer, Michael Kennedy, they're making a Back to the Future style slasher film. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> not, not oh. the I was expecting. <laughs> right. I mean, well, we mentioned it earlier. She's all that. She's all that. So they do the makeover and then they become a stalker and serial, like the fan. <laughs> Well, I think yeah, it's Legally yeah. Blonde, and she's the lawyer murdering the people that she's then, I don't know, uh, yeah. representing. And, <laughs> and snap. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> snapping next, snapping next. Yeah, that could work. Give people perms, left, right, and centre. <laughs> yeah, why uh, not? So, <laughs> Free Key was made on a budget of $5 million. Of course, it's Blumhouse. That's their, uh, their regular budget to give to original projects. And it made fifteen point nine million dollars worldwide, which I believe it's classed as a flop. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> it's a film that suffered because of the pandemic. I was yes, going to say, yeah, yeah, when it came out, it was it was difficult, wasn't it? I think for a lot of films. Yeah, so that brings me to the trivia. That is that is part of the trivia a little later on. But first, Vince Vaughn's fall during the auditorium chase was accidental and not scripted. He slipped on the fake plant that was knocked over and lost his balance but continued the scene. What what a what a chance. What a professional. <laughs> that guy. I don't know why I kept that bit of trivia in. I was quite shit that is... <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, keep it in. I like I it. I learned a lot from the Psycho remake. Really <laughs> oh um, yeah, Vince Vaughn's in this. Famous for wanking in Psycho. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think he's famous for that. For us, he's in some other films as well. He's in some. Uh, what has he been in actually? Film called. He was in Dodgeball. Wedding Wedding Crashes? Crashes. Oh, he was in Dodgeball. Yeah. yeah. Dodgeball. I was going to say was, Dodgeball is probably um, where I know him from. What about Carrie Fisher's assistant that pretends to be an agent in Sex in the City, <laughs> and he shags Carrie? <laughs> There's, there's, um, he was in a film as Is a that cameraman, my or did I make that up? He was in The Lost World. Yes, um, he was a cameraman in The Lost yeah. World, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I'm, it's weird, I feel like I've seen him in so much, but now I'm, mm. I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I can only name a handful of films. Yeah. Um, Catherine Newton's also in this. Someone was really rude on our Facebook about Catherine Newton. I said she was apparently Walmart, they're obviously American. Walmart version of Amber Heard. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I mean, I, I I strongly disagree. But anyway, mm. uh, yeah, she's. I feel this. like I've seen her before as well. Yeah. Um, she, but I um. She, well, <laughs> she looks like someone from Hollyoaks, and I don't. Know oh. <laughs> <laughs> she does. She absolutely does. I don't know which Holly. Someone in Hollyoaks. I don't like... know anyone in Hollyoaks anymore. No, I don't, I don't think I need to, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody in Holly Hollyoaks knows what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> the writers definitely don't. Anyway. Um... Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Catherine Newton. She was in uh, Paranormal Activity Four. Um, the main girl in that. Um, she was in Free Billboards, Big Little Lies, uh, Detective Pikachu. She was in that. Uh, yeah, she's in, in, in a bunch of random stuff, but I, I think she's great. I mean, she's really good in this. Um, I think I get her was, very confused with. Is it? Uh, I've just had a look. Madison Eisman. I think her yes. and Catherine Newton look very, very similar. They um, do. But well, yeah, sorry, my two cents. <laughs> <laughs> I um, yeah, I thought well, I thought she was bloody brilliant. Um, mm. Yeah, I th- she was possibly my favourite perform. Um, well, Vince Vaughn surprised me in this as well, but both of them very strong leads. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely, they do a really good job once the swap comes into play. So yeah, we'll get to that shortly. Uh, she was the first <laughs> choice for Millie, uh, but she originally declined the role. But Jason Blum talked her into it, apparently. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Interesting. I wonder, I wonder if that involved money. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Uh, 
the budget get, just uh, went Jason up. Jason Blum to talk to Paramount about Nev Campbell. Uh, yeah. oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very interested to know what went on there. I, I'm not like, I don't need to know specifics of numbers, but I, I have a sneaking suspicion they were going to kill Sydney off in this one. And I think that's why she's kind of said, do you know what? If this is going to be my last hurrah, I need, I need yeah. money for years to come. Mm-hmm. Um, and they weren't offering that. Um, but I don't know. At least she's safe. We know she's still alive. That's the main thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather I'd rather no Sydney at all than a half ass Sydney. So. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. But this is what I was saying to Chris. Opens on her funeral. But this is what I was saying to Chris. I Can think, you imagine? I thought they were going to kill her off in the opening scene. That's what I thought was going to mm. happen. Mm. Yeah, I still think Kirby's oh. Kirby's going in the opening. But I just I just feel like they need to make up for the opening of the last film. Yeah, so we weren't the biggest of fans of Scream Five um, or Five Cream, as we like to refer to it. <laughs> um, but I, I don't know. I'm curious to see what they're going to do with this. Uh, they're moving to yeah. New York, aren't they? I think for this one. So they are. Yeah, that's so, a choice. That's yeah. A choice. Let's hope they're not on a boat for an hour of the film. Yeah, so, I, I'm yeah. hoping for the Jason <laughs> Takes Manhattan approach. To be, to be honest. <laughs> Um, but we're getting to, back to Jason Blum's uh, persuasive ways. He recently said in an interview that he's thinking of uh, trying to get Robert Englund back to do New Nightmare on Elm Street. And in that same interview, he was like, I can get anyone back. I've got Ellen Burstyn back and she's 87. Well, what the fuck are you saying to these people? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm kind of curious to see. Uh, I'm curious to see how that pans out as well, actually, because she said that she's already filmed her scenes, hasn't she, for, for yeah. the Exorcist reboot. So, hmm. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm but... just, um, yeah, I'm at a point where I'm like happy to see some of these franchises returning, but I'm also, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's my, a lot. My issue with that is I love Ellen Burstyn. She's a queen. Mm-hmm. How about she get a paycheck? The Exorcist wasn't Ellen Burstyn's film. It was Linda Blair. Mm. The mm. one you want to get back is Linda Blair. Yeah. Mm. Really? Well, I think they're going to, it's go- I think she's going to be back. I mean, I don't see how they can't, but I think they're going to keep that under wraps. And I, mean, I, I hope they do, because that would be a surprise. The most exciting comeback news right now is Chucky season two is basically <laughs> a bound reunion. And it makes yeah. me so happy. <laughs> so happy. Yeah, Incredible. That, that was a great announcement. Like the cast of Bound and certain from Real Housewives. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of all the Real Housewives becoming like final girls now, because obviously yeah. Kyle, Kyle's, <laughs> gone, <laughs> Kyle's gone back to Halloween. And I'm I'm not even a Real Housewives person, but I think that would get me into the show. Yeah. Um, Real yeah. Housewives <laughs> of like Crystal Lake. <laughs> that, that, that needs to happen. That needs to ha- Copyright, we've, we've trademarked that on this, on this podcast. <laughs> Do Elm Street. Now that would be that. What with each house being a real housewife? Yeah, Patricia Arquette. She has to come back. <laughs> oh no, she she died when she changed. Oh, face. it doesn't matter, does it? Oh, yeah, she changed that. face. That real, yeah, wreck yeah. on that. <laughs> Should we CGI back into it? <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, director co-writer Christopher Landon proposed a crossover film with Happy Death Day called Freaky Death Day. Uh, which would, I mean, it would work because, you know, the tone is exactly the same. These mm. characters would work really well together. Um, but, I mean, it's just, did, did enough people see this for something like that to work and make money? Mm. As sad as that is. I mean, I haven't seen it, and that's the most important opinion out there. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do know a little bit of trivia myself. Um, it was proposed to be called... Um, Freaky Friday the 13th. Um, that is but... so weird. That is my next bit of trivia. <laughs> oh, I am so sorry. He does this on our podcast as well. You're way ahead of me. <laughs> I, like, I really like to sound like I know things. Um, apparently, like, the big mouse got involved. I'm like, no. No. Yeah. Oh, I really wish they did cross over with the actual fr- um, Freaky Friday franchise. Because you imagine this film with Jamie Lee Curtis in it. Oh, my God. I think any film with Jamie Lee Curtis, I'm going to go check yeah, out. That's so, true, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have, you, uh, have you seen, what was the film called where Jamie Lee Curtis played that uh, radio DJ that got off of a married man? Love Letters. Love Letters. If no one's that... watched Love Letters. <laughs> no, but no. you've sold it to me in one sentence. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
it's a, it's, this is this is exactly how I feel when people haven't watched Heartbreakers with Sigourney Weaver and Jennifer Love Hewitt, and one of the greatest films ever made, and barely anyone's seen it. Somebody hasn't watched it. I haven't seen it. Also, I haven't seen it. <laughs> how did I sell it to you when Sigourney sings back in the USSR? Yeah. <laughs> when you were that's the one. Tell you need to watch it. <laughs> Okay, I've got homework now. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I have a friend. Da- I will tell the story. I have a friend, David. Uh, <laughs> good friends for many years. David, if you're listening, love you. You're probably not listening. Um, He's not listening. No. He has no idea what freak he is. But his, his taste in music is very much steps. Cher Lloyd. And Cher Lloyd. And whoever was on the X Cher Lloyd. Hi, Cher Lloyd. Disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> so we were having a discussion about the Beatles. And he had no idea. And he was like, oh, back in the USSR. I was like, that's a fucking weird Beatles song yeah. for him <laughs> to know. I'm like, how, how the fuck did you know that? And we're watching Heartbreakers together. And she starts singing back in the USSR. And I'm like, is this how you know the fucking song? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I've got no idea what the Beatles are. <laughs> so he sang it in Heartbreakers. <laughs> Incredible. Oh. Yeah, it's great. I mean, 13 going on 30, like, for my music taste. Yeah, yeah. that's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Benatar. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Go, guys. Oh. Love some Pat Benatar. Uh, so, uh, director, co-writer Christopher Landon cited Bright Night, The Blob, 1988 Blob, Scream, Scream 2, Urban Legend, Cherry Falls, and Jennifer's Body as the inspirations for this film. I can see that. Mm. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of homages, yeah. especially in that opening scene. The opening like, scene is just so basically much. a love letter to the slasher franchise. Isn't yeah, it, really? for sure. Absolutely. Uh, he also said, <laughs> if in... we ever wrote a horror film, I, I feel like it would look like our reference. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, Christopher Landon also said uh, that he couldn't get approval to use various search engines and products, but Grinder was completely fine with using a version of theirs. <laughs> <laughs> As long as the character using it was 18, which is crazy. Have you watched Love Victor? Yes, with yeah. their version yeah. of the Grinder. Yeah. Their version of the Grinder is uh, <laughs> I don't know why they couldn't get the rights for it because it's literally dating app and search or something like that. It's, yeah. it's, big, it's because it's oh, 17, okay. yeah. Yeah. But, um, uh, I, I, I'm go. just going to say <laughs> thank you so much for that Grinder. Like, Allies, <laughs> allies to the horror community, <laughs> and it w- it's been a great scene as well with the postman on there. That is, that is <laughs> it's always the ones that you never expect, isn't it? That you see on that app, <laughs> always, always. And Vince Vaughn uh, told the stunt driver to actually hit him with the car when he was crossing the street early in the film. Uh, the director said Vaughn said he could take the hit and actually did it, but. But forget that piece of trivia. That the the grinder thing reminded me to just tell you guys how genius your grinder segment is on your episodes. Oh, thank oh, you, thank you. <laughs> it's yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I've got to say that the hookup horror section is probably my favorite bit, especially mm-hmm. because I have now like volumes. Um, <laughs> we I, need to publish these. That I've, had, I've had that I've had sent to me. I've had friends reach out, and I've had friends who don't even listen to the podcast. Who, when I put a call out, and we're just like, "Here you go, have some of mine." Obviously, I have some of my own that I draw on as well, of which there are encyclopedias. Of. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's it is my favorite. I think that's what we wanted when we made the podcast. It was like we do want to come at it from. A fun but informed perspective, but mm. I want to emphasize like real life horror. But I didn't, I'm not true crime because I'm not a true crime girl. Um, <laughs> so what's the There's only a lot other... of true crime happening on Grinder yeah. though every day? Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Grinder is the true crime. To be I fair. absolutely <laughs> love that section though because it's always Liam telling the stories, the other Liam. So I just get to kick back and just get freaked out by the disgusting <laughs> things that people do to each other. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's very entertaining. <laughs> I thought we had stories, but compared to some of them, I'm like, yeah. oh, I've been laughing all right. Actually. It shocked there's, me. There's, there's shocked one. Me. There's one that I'm saving for a future episode, and I know what film I want to be talking about when I read it out. I have quite a strong stomach, and that one was a little bit just like, oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's like my um, 
that's like my secret weapon. I I'm can't trying to think to of it. what the worst one is that I think you've you've told me so far. I mean, the one in New Orleans stands out with the disgusting like couch and the spoon and the ice cream the spoon and from between. Oh, yeah. That's so good. <laughs> Yeah, I like I liked our first lesbian entry into the franchise with the lollipop and the vagina. That yeah, was great. <laughs> yeah, oh, fun Just, memories. Yeah, <laughs> it is, is that, if, for our listeners, if that's not enough to make you want to listen to their quiz, like, I don't know what it is. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and for my final piece of trivia, uh, Freaky was released digitally shortly after its theatrical release and experienced delays due to the coronavirus pandemic. Jason Blum uh, has stated that he wasn't happy with the distribution plan for it and did something similar for Halloween Kills, releasing it digitally at the same time as theatre so everyone could see it, mm-hmm. regardless of whether or not they can make it to a movie theatre. Uh, but he also said he wouldn't be doing the same for Halloween Ends after this experience. That's mm. that's fair enough. <laughs> that's just, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, think... have, I can't imagine how hard it must have been as like any sort of filmmaker during that time like sure. everything sure. getting pushed back must have been an absolute hell and as an audience it was hell for us as well just knowing that there was going to be a period where there was just you nothing know, new for a good <laughs> while wasn't yeah. there i think that maybe influenced their decision with halloween kills as well because obviously yeah. initially it was supposed to be ready and come out in in 20 2020 wasn't it and then they were yeah. like no we're going to push this back now i think maybe freaky informed that decision because it didn't do that well on on streaming um, I know it's obviously where I caught the film because uh, I watched it when it did first come out. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's a shame. Uh, I'm I'm interested to see what they do with with Halloween ends. Obviously, hopefully we're all going to be back to normal anyway now, so yeah. that's good. It is yeah. a shame because I really feel like this film does deserve to have its um, for sure it it have its have its moment of glory, and I really hope it does. Like some of the best films have become cult classics, and people have loved, and I hope that that's this film gets that because. A lot of love went into this film. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. it will. I think it will find its audience in the next few years, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, and you, comparison-wise, Jennifer's body yeah. is mm-hmm. probably it'll probably take the same trajectory as, as yes. that. Yes, mm-hmm. misunderstood. Um, and then down the line, people are like, oh, I actually get this. Yes, yeah, it's definitely one of those films that's. It's made for a very specific audience. Like on my letterbox, when I look at the people I follow the difference between the straight people who like horror who have watched it and the gay people who like horror who have watched it <laughs> is very, very noticeable. Very mm. noticeable. Yeah. A lot of people mm. just don't get it. Um, yeah. But it, it is great. And, you know, like you said, we wrote a slash film. It'll probably be something along these lines. Yeah. <laughs> I always, um, I say that, like, a straight and a queer audience are so different, though. I think, yeah. the, I think the best example of that is Rocky Horror. Rocky Horror was wildly successful because it was gay people and straight, queer people and straight people came together and loved that film. Shock Treatment yeah. came out, and it, it was only really the queers that ended up loving it, myself mm-hmm. included. Shock yeah. Treatment's one of the greatest films of all time. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just, we, uh, I feel like we really do take the films that have been discarded much like our community not to get deep on it but we feel like we take films that people have like left on the side of the road and we give them new life and i love i love that about us i love being gay (laughs) (laughs) it's the best tasting film so you know it's it's great (laughs) if this was your podcast would there be music behind that (laughs) yeah there'd be like an inspirational (laughs) yeah vise or something yeah for sure being gay isn't a choice, but I would take it. Take it, all take it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> God, she's really taking it. <laughs> What's that problem? What's that problem where she's like, oh, God, she's getting it. It's, a, it's Monique. <laughs> <laughs> and that is, really helps me segue into this next part. Uh, during all of our Prime of episodes, we always ask our guests, what makes this gay? The film. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? Is, is this personal? Very moment. What, what is gay about now? <laughs> what makes this gay? Uh, well, the fact that none of us have anything on below at the desk. <laughs> Probably pretty gay. <laughs> I'm wearing a, a sleeveless hoodie, which is pretty gay. Um, <laughs> and a bedazzled G-string. <laughs> oh. oh, no, but in terms of this film, I, I, obviously, you've got the, um, obviously you've got the, 
the obvious by it being written directed by queer people and then including queer characters but i think it's the it's the body element to it i feel like um it reads very different to a community where there are ridiculous body standards um yeah. for me anyway that's how i read it i've never oh well being an ex-skinny person um and now trying to adjust um the gay world in a new body that doesn't fit what everybody's expecting of me and looking weird uh, um my reading of this was like being on a spiritual level because if you're you know if you're anything below if you're anything over underweight as a homosexual you are considered to be yeah you, you just disregard yeah. it yeah, yeah there's sure. that, that buddiness to it and also i've spoken to <clears throat> so sorry i've spoken to a friend of mine who said their reading as a as a trans person was completely completely different to what i was reading it as and they mm. were saying um you know you've now entered this new world in this body where you have so much power in it and you don't know how to contain it and you try to navigate a space where you try and contain that strength that you've got inside oh my god yeah <laughs> anyway i mean they That's... do make mention to that in in some parts don't they because they do mention yeah. obviously pronouns and such and i think probably what makes it it, it gay or queer for me is I suppose the references they make to like the bullying and experience of going through school as as being seen as something other and like you said Liam not fitting everyone's kind of standards mm -hmm. of what it means to be popular or look the right way or all these sorts of things um I think of course yeah um the queer talent behind the film is is a major major thing and for this not to be like the first film but one of many that this guy's done I think is 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 really nice to see uh, and kudos i guess to blumhouse for keep taking taking uh, those chances on on him and and making those films uh, and of course we have the the openly gay and proud character of of josh um who i i i really enjoyed i thought it yeah. was refreshing um and i did actually think um although a bit of a caricature in some ways i did think that the character was a lot of fun and also like his queerness added to i really the like story. the fact that um he wasn't like this perfect character he wasn't like we've got to write this person with no flaws i mean mm. at the beginning he's talking about like trolling for straight dick yeah <laughs> and he doesn't care if they're conscious or not and stuff like that. and it's like oh but then i was like actually showing we us know that, those people yeah, yeah we, <laughs> we know those people but also it's it's nice to say that we're going to write these characters with flaws and not try and put them on a yeah. pedestal because the best way to portray us then is to show that you know we we make jokes about people just as often as you straight men do i mean yeah yeah, yeah absolutely yeah i mean that's i couldn't have said it better myself actually that's that's a really fantastic reading into the film isn't it that is actually yeah well I, I usually do those sort of readings but i didn't get yeah because you're weak <laughs> up chris <laughs> 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 I'm like, oh. that be I, like, oh, I like the film it was very nice <laughs> <laughs> film was all right i guess yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 so getting into the film, after swapping bodies with a deranged serial killer, a young girl in high school discovers she has less than 24 hours before the change becomes permanent. And we start on Wednesday the 11th, where four teenagers are discussing urban legends of a serial killer known as the Blissfield Butcher. Uh, he started his reign of violence in 1977 and continues killing people until this day. So immediately, you know, immediately the references are there. Wednesday the 11th, we know exactly where that's going. I love I loved um, that title so much. It really got yeah. a chuckle out of me. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, the conversation about, you know, the killer starting in 1977 and still killing now. Like, oh, well, isn't he an old man now? You know, it's, it, it feels like a direct dig at Halloween. Yeah, and, I thought uh, so, yeah. Some house is Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. If you've been spawned though, you'd be a bit insulted. <laughs> you're watching the film at the premiere in 19... I'm like, 1977! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
he old. I'm not playing 50. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm actually probably older than 50. Yeah. I know. I was. I, I'm actually curious. How how old do we, do we reckon Vince Vaughn is? Let me. So my mum, my mum's well? only a couple know? of years younger than Vince Vaughn. So you know. Already. So I'm I'm not gonna join in on calling him old. Well, how old how old do you <laughs> reckon, how old do you reckon he he is, guys? I think. I mean, I've just Googled this. It's not fair. I'm not going to oh. guess. Chris, what do you think? I think... 50. 50. 50. Early 50s. He's 52, so... 52. Yeah. I think he looks good what? for it. <laughs> he does, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel like what I love about this nowadays, though, is, like, the 50s now compared to 50s, like, 50 years ago. There's so mm. much difference. Like, yeah. 50 in the... In this generation is you look like Vince Vaughn when you're 50, whereas like 50 years ago it's like, oh, you look like Alec Guinness. Well, the the Sex in the City uh, new series are just like that. They're the same age as the Golden Girls when they started. So I think that perfectly oh sums I, up. I know which show I'd rather watch though. Well, yeah, yeah I, mean, I, I love just, just, just like, like that. that. I love Sex <laughs> in the City, but not just. So like... get me started on Golden Girls because I'll be talking forever. <laughs> well, My absolute li- favorite. The other Liam's just got into it, and yeah, so it makes me really happy. Yeah, literally, it's on Disney Plus, so I've started now. Year. Have you? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, I'll be, I'll be with yeah. you because I'm every night. <laughs> Thank you for being. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, what's everyone's thoughts on Shay Diaz? No, oh, no, no. <laughs> D- no. <laughs> <laughs> Silence. <laughs> I, I, but I will say, you know, as a massive Grey's Anatomy fan. Yeah, yeah. You know, great actor, great performer, great gowns, beautiful gowns. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, the gowns were beautiful. <laughs> um, but no, I just, um, it doesn't feel like Sex and the City to me no. at all. I, but I've never again it's another thing i've never really got into um so apologies i don't know if i'm qualified to be on this podcast but um, <laughs> i'm just gonna, <laughs> i'm just gonna leave this leave this uh this chat i think room. that's for the best <laughs> uh, but i don't know it even rubbed me the wrong way i think just seeing the scenes i'd seen i was just like it, it felt like it was trying too hard for oh, me way yeah. Too hard. But, yeah and it's got a second season, so which we will be watching. We've been looking at Ditch and Moan about it, but we will be watching. Gluttons for punishment, that's what we are. Yeah. Although, yeah. I will say, if we're talking about great reboots and revival seasons, the first episode of the new Queer as Folk reboot was absolutely phenomenal to me. Um, so it's really great to see that that mantle being continued. Mm. So, I haven't seen yet. Is this... I watched the English... Queer as Folk, mm-hmm. and I didn't watch the American. Is this a reboot of the American? It's a bit of folk? it's a bit it's a bit of both. Um, mm. There's there's a scene where you see Charlie Hunnam's character on Grinder topless with a beard and a man. Okay, <laughs> incredible. Because <laughs> I like oh I like the original UK one. I mean, by today's standards, it's very noncy. But, but yeah, it was the first time. <laughs> it was when I I was. I must have. I was under ten, or maybe around ten when it came out. I'm going to say under ten because it makes me younger. Uh, the <laughs> first time I ever found out about Rimmin. Yeah. What a way! What a way to find Changed out. Changed my life. Changed <laughs> my life. <laughs> anyway, and you were under ten. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I was going to learn at one point, wasn't I? And it. <laughs> What better way to watch it than on screen? Then you know. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna <laughs> stop talking about Rimmin and talking about um, <laughs> Freaky. So we're talking about that opening. That opening is absolutely gorgeous. Yes. Um, yes. So uh, Isaac spills a drink over Sandra. Uh, he then starts rimming her. Oh wait, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last conversation. She goes to clean it up, and the couple. Uh, the other couple starts making out when Isaac goes after her. He finds a knife on display with the words Ladola underneath it and wanders off on his own, leading to a fantastic first kill. Uh, the Blissfield Butcher grabs Isaac in the basement and kills him by ramming a bottle of wine down his throat, sorority row style. 
Yeah, it I very much that, reminded me of Sorority Row, all the just, oral penetration yeah. in that film. There's definitely that. <laughs> the what I love is that, that it wasn't sense, enough but... to just ram it down his throat. It then has to splinter it yeah. so the shards come out. Oh my God, it was <laughs> beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> see, this is how messed up we are. Like, we all see a scene like that and we're like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it, I've, got a, I've got to do a massive shout out to Tony Gardner, who did all like the, um, who did all the kills for this. Um, at, like, it's so nice to see like practical effects. Um, I mean, there is some CGI in it, but it bl- it's like so blended so well that you can't. I don't feel like it's it, but yeah, Tony Gardner did all the kills for this. Yeah. Um, like, what a work of art! I also found out that he was in the Thriller video <laughs> when he oh, was like, when he was like a teenager. Um, but no, he t- did all the effects for it, and I feel like that's what makes this film work for me it's uh, a lot of um a lot of slashes in this in this generation tend to do that horrible ugly cgi blood effect that never mm. looks right to me yeah. um yeah. but they they just stepped really into it and we'll we'll get into it further on in the film because there's there's a kill in this film later on that shit on me is absolutely yeah. insane <laughs> but anyway yeah that that glass bottle down the neck when it splinters is stunning yeah, absolutely. And when it started off like this, I knew immediately, I was like, okay, I'm going to fucking love this film. This is, yeah, like, it sets know, the this tone. Absolutely. This is going for everything that I love about Slash. Yeah, films. yeah. Um, the Butcher then kills Sandra by repeatedly. Can I ask you a question? Sorry, yeah. this is um, not really related to the film necessarily. Have you ever put club soda on a stain? N- like, no, no. Is, what is that? <laughs> uh, it's an old American wives' tale. I'm sure it is. You put club soda. What is club soda? Is it just soda water? I think so. I think it is. But yeah. Like, Spill a bit of beer on yourself. You don't. It's not going to stain, is it? I don't know. Does it fizz its way out? <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, I'd I just buy some vanish. It's my third yeah. viewing, so I was looking and, at these a little bit. I already knew what was going to happen. When I take. Yeah, <laughs> it's, to me, that's very interesting. I suppose I like it's easier that. than we're saying, getting, like... I like that we're all getting, like, cleaning tips from this film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do I need to have club soda available at all times? Amazing. Um, Kim and Aggie. I was going to say, yeah, Kim and Aggie style. <laughs> Filth! Adulterer! <laughs> Chicken livered shits! <laughs> Don't you do this to me. <laughs> The butcher then kills Sandra by repeatedly slamming her head with a toilet seat. I mean, I'm partial to that. <laughs> <laughs> the um, cut as well from that into the sex scene, I will say. Chef's yeah. kiss. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, meanwhile, Ginny and her boyfriend are having sex outside and she finishes before him. But she's not best pleased about it, but she tells him it's a vagina, not an all-night drive for us. Oh. Just ah, oh, we love I, to see it. <laughs> incredible! I love that. Oh, what an angel! Yeah, the dialogue in this film is amazing. Mm. Uh, there's so many great one-liners in it. It's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, the butcher appears whilst they're walking through a tennis court. Snaps a tennis racket and puts both sides through Ginny's boyfriend's head. <laughs> it's what I really it, like. That these kills are insane, and the fact is they're so inventive, and they're not yeah. just like. Not just, oh, someone else will go like this in the film. It's, like, so unique. It's I just took yeah, this really. as another reminder to not get into sports. So yeah, that's, exactly. that was my takeaway from this. Like, Thank if I'm God. not near the tennis court, I'm not going to get killed. So yeah, Apart from water so. sports. Obviously. I'm, I'm all... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm always needing those excuses. So uh, I'll take yeah. that as well. Mm-hmm. It's dangerous <laughs> out there, man. <laughs> uh, finally, Ginny is impaled on a blunt object on the wall. Her parents come home and find her, and we then see that the butcher is left with the Lodola dagger. Ooh. Very scream. I uh, love this. So, whereas in scream, can you see, baby? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this one. She got boys around. I'm gonna fuck it. <laughs> what I really like is, yeah, there are so many. This opening scene, we obviously the end of it is homage is back to the cold opening from Scream. Um, you've got the killer who's like doing the head tilt that Michael Myers does. Um, there's a bit where he bursts through the door like Jason. Um, yeah, it's just it's a little bit, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. That must I have been so it. much fun filming that, though, as and making mm-hmm. that yeah, like yeah. knowing what you were you were referencing. I'd love that. Yeah. Oh. The uh, 
The next day, uh, Thursday, the 12th, bullied high school student Millie Kessler is having breakfast with her mum and sister, Shah, a police officer. When they discuss how Millie is missing a homecoming dance to go see Wicked at the Anus Theatre with her mum. <laughs> and uh, Shah finds an empty bottle of Chardonnay in the bin. Do we think the bottle of Chardonnay is a reference to Halloween H2O? With Laurie Strode <laughs> drinking Chardonnay. See, do you know, I'd never seen that, but 100% now I'm like, yes. To me, it was, uh, she was giving me very much um, Nancy's mum from Nightmare on Elm yeah. Street. Just this, like, yes. Uh, yeah. the airy cupboard. Just <laughs> <laughs> get some sleep, baby. <laughs> oh, Come I've down to the basement and mummy will tell you everything. <laughs> I've got to say, this... I don't mind the mum as much, but that I find that sister infuriating. I just really? as a character, as a character, I didn't like, I didn't like the the cop sister. Oh, I um, liked her. I thought she was yeah. strong, independent woman. She need no man. So no, but she yeah. needed, she just needed some better writing. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of on the fence because I I. I do like it, but I also don't like that she did the whole uh, not taking the time to believe people in her town or something thing. That's one of my biggest gripes in horror films. And mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, she, she did that later on. But um, well, yeah. believe that her sister has swapped bodies. With yeah. Sim- I mean, it is a lot. I think that's the plot of the film. We can suspend belief. You know, her... <laughs> we can suspend belief. <laughs> yeah, just think about it. If someone told you oh, that. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> true, true. Uh, <laughs> Millie goes to school with her friends, Nyla and Josh. Josh is hoping to get with drunk straight boys at the homecoming dance and shows the girls what's on offer in their town whilst walking to school. Uh, the 61-year-old postman on Grinder. I mean, all been there. All been there. You've all met postman on Grinder. Yeah. <laughs> Had a special actually, delivery. <laughs> actually, yes. Um, so it's a funny story. Um, there used to be this guy who I really fancy called Matt. Um, you know, I might just send this episode to him. I was telling him that. Um, this guy called Matt, who I used to really fancy, we used to, you know, make the postman Matt joke to him all the time. Um, his photo on Grinder was really funny, and he was so he was like trying to do it so nobody knew what it was. So it was like a naked shot, but with his post bag in front of his junk. But um, why? But he, he had a very distinctive. Um, badge on his post bag that I gave him so I messaged him and I was like hi Matt and he was like how do you know it's me and I'm like because you're dumb like <laughs> one I don't know many postmen I know one and then two the fact is you you if you take that pin off your badge people won't be able to recognize uh, pin off your bag you don't want to be able to recognize you you dumb fuck <laughs> Anyway, that was mine. Nothing gets past you on Grinder. Nothing gets past you. Like a hawk. (laughs) Chris, do you ever know any postman? No. No? No. No deliveries for me, unfortunately. There was was one in Coventry that used to invite people around to a shed. I never went. But there was... This is sounding sounding kind of hot, so... (laughs) (laughs) I mean, if I went, I might have had a story to have sent into your podcast. But, you uh, mean you didn't take him up on the offer to go to a desolate shed in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> I would have. Sadly, sadly not, no. The same guy knows my dad as well. Is he a shed so in that's... his back garden? <laughs> no, it was a proper shed. Like, Next to the marrow. Just an old shed. Oh, yeah. okay. Did um, it have power? I mean, that's a deciding factor for me. Like, it, are we going to have light? Didn't get that light? far. Um... <laughs> <laughs> But if you're ever in Coventry, um, you might you might still be there. You might still be alive. Um, it's quite old at the time. Um, <laughs> or he might be in prison because he I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else took him up on the offer. <laughs> uh, uh, Millie gets bullied by girls who uh, ask if she got a sweater from a discount store. Uh, she goes to woodshop class. Discount Bonanza. Discount Bonanza, sorry. Where her mum works. Um, she... It's such a, like a school insult. Like, mum works out. Oh, it's it's <laughs> just like, <laughs> it's just like PE bags. Like, yeah. mum, I'm not taking my, my PE kit in a netto bag. Like, fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> or like. No, that. that's a throwback. Is there any nettos anymore? I don't know. There's no nettos anymore. I used to love 
I used to only want to shop there because A, it was cheap and we couldn't afford anything, but two, their, their mascot was a little cute dog, so we always wanted to go in. <laughs> I think the only Neto I know is a core Neto, to be honest. I don't, yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember Neto. <laughs> no? <laughs> no. Wow. Every day is a school day. <laughs> But I'm only 25. Mm. Oh, yeah. I'm 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 the oldest one in here. And like <laughs> Moment of I don't, silence Chris is actually 25. I'm not actually 25. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I but I know. No, no. If you believe in I'm 25. No, no. But I know. I think I know. <laughs> Can both you see me ages. clearly? <laughs> <laughs> It's very no, blurred. I'm, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm still the oldest one in here. I've just realised. Oh. Anyway, stop the gay crisis. Let's start talking about something else. <laughs> um, Millie goes to work and she's got class late, and uh, Booker Strode, yes, Strode is a surname in the IMDb cast. Oh, I see what they did there. Uh, the boy she has a crush on tells her to set her watch five minutes forward so she's never late. That will be useful. Uh, I wonder if that's going to become <laughs> helpful later in the film. Uh, teacher Mr. Bernardi's a piece of shit. Uh, cunt. Absolute cunt. He really is. He, he tries to uh, humiliate her in front of the class until everyone gets a notification about Ginny and her friends being murdered. Um, which leads to a very funny video uh, found by Josh of a girl pretending <laughs> to be upset about Ginny dying. I, yeah, that's the girl, why that's... the hell would you want to get into the teaching profession if you were that evil of a person? Like, it, like there was, te- but to be fair, there was teachers like that at my school who were just like complete sociopaths who just like mm-hmm. victimised one people. But I was too much of a gobshite for them to ever speak to me like that. <laughs> Ever, nobody speaks to me like that. Even yeah, I certainly wouldn't cry in front of them. Like, you, yeah. no, I'd just oh, be no. like, okay, let's. But I would. Yeah, the class. <laughs> yeah, we'll deal with that after class with a big fucking sore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, as a former, oh sorry, you pair, Sorry, as a former teacher's pair, she was late though. She was late for class. <laughs> which, which again? Yeah. Understand where he's going. So, but she like, did she ever work done? No, she had nothing to show. Like, I've, I've been, I've been late for class, and I've never expected somebody to sit there and be like, "Hi, Paul, you okay? <laughs> you ugly fat bitch." <laughs> <laughs> I do think, though, this film very much had to set up these characters as yeah. extremely unlikable very oh, fast. Ev- everybody so I think, who died in this deserved it, and I loved uh, it. Yeah, I think the I think the twitter meter was up to an 11 on everyone, wasn't it? So I, I get it. But he was unnecessarily nasty. <laughs> Way harsh. Yeah, flash films are a lot more satisfying yeah. when you don't like anyone in the films. Yeah. You know, you want to see him dying in inventive ways. It is, it is really great. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he, he gets it. <laughs> he really <laughs> gets the best effort of the film. Yeah. Um, Millie, uh, performing as the school mascot, uh, Nyla and Josh attend the Blissfield Valley High School homecoming football game, where, <laughs> in, in a really nice touch to the film, how much they camp this up, uh, we see a football game set to physical by Dua Lipa. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Again, we love to see it. We love to hear it. <laughs> um, uh, and the footballers, except Booker, discuss how hideous Millie is. I mean, like, I just—I <laughs> feel like I'm really like not seeing anything there. I think she's quite pretty. <laughs> oh, she is. Yeah, I, I did. I think the only thing that kind of grumbled me a little bit, but I suppose it's always the same with these kind of like body swap films or high school movies. Is I don't know when someone takes their glasses off, they suddenly become incredibly attractive, or yeah. I don't know their hair's put up instead <laughs> of that. She's all that. Oh, she's yeah. hot now. Yeah. Do you put know a what? Red I... jacket on, and that's it. You you are so hot immediately. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, I don't know, but also I love the fact that their their animal is a beaver because I mean that's that's mm-hmm. obviously intentional, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Well, he just said the only beaver no one would touch. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Unnecessary. <laughs> I feel like I feel like when they were writing this, they were like, "Oh, there was this blonde girl I really hated in school, so I'm just gonna." Yeah. No wonder gonna... she turned down the part. She probably read the script and she was yeah. like, "I'm gonna need months of therapy." <laughs> Jason Jason um, Bunn, the way that he convinced yeah. him, it's like, it's not real. It's like, you are very nice. You are very nice. <laughs> You're not actually, you know, this rancid thing that nobody ever wants. 
<laughs> you just wait until you get the red leather jacket and put your hair up. You'll be yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, Millie's mum was supposed to pick her up after the game, but she passed out drunk on the sofa. And as Millie waits for a ride home, they would now empty school. The butcher attacks her. Uh, I'm so sorry. Her in the shoulder with the... I'm so sorry if I keep laughing every time you say Millie. I'm expecting Millie Bobby Brown. So, and, then, <laughs> and then when you mention the car <laughs> and Millie, I was like, oh, she's here. Let's ride. <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> so sorry. It's a yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she uh, she gets stabbed in the shoulder with the Lodola, which causes an identical wound to instantly appear on the butcher's shoulder. And Shah arrives just in time and scares off the butcher. Uh, but the police collect the Lodola as evidence and initiate a manhunt for the butcher. And then we're taken to Friday the 13th. Woo! Millie's mum is the real villain. She is. I mean, that's <laughs> it. She caught all of it. I mean, yeah. And she thinks some nice pancakes the next day is going to make up for the fact she is an abject failure as a mother. It's yeah. uh, that's <laughs> and she makes it all about her. Such a, oh, I can't believe I've done this. It was only one glass of chardonnay at four thirty. It's, like, it's not yeah. about you, though. Well she, well, she does it for later on in the film. She makes a whole scene about her, and I'm like, whose film is this, hun? <laughs> Remember yeah. who's this guy? <laughs> God's sake. <laughs> It's, uh, it's now the Jamie Lee Curtis. She is. Right, I suppose. She is. If, if, it, if it wasn't a horror film, they would have swapped. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and the mini oversharing in the uh, changing room. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's Friday the 13th, and the butcher and Millie discover they have switched bodies. The butcher wakes up as Millie uh, in her room with alternative band fo- uh, posters, such as Panic at Disco and Churches, before having breakfast and almost stabbing Shah with Millie's, uh, whilst Millie's mum's chatting to the gay postman. Uh, nice little touch bringing him into it yeah <laughs> I've seen you before um, <laughs> <laughs> whereas uh, Millie wakes up as the butcher in an abandoned building on a dirty mattress with mannequins and dead animals everywhere and a squatter looking for drugs uh, who offers to suck all of Millie's dick all of it all of it yeah. I mean at least he's thorough <laughs> He treats he's not it's not a blow it's not a blow job for him, it's a blow career. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> there are drugs on the line. <laughs> Did you know that this one of the posters was half of a pitch perfect two poster? What? Oh. So it was just the bottom half, so you could only see their legs. Oh. But I don't know why it had been folded over and stuck on the wall. It's probably wow. a rights issue. I mean Anna Kendrick was probably yeah, I uh... do know. Oh. <laughs> I, I do know, actually, and it was a bit trivial. I left that because I thought it wasn't that interesting. Um, but actually, wow, that's rude. <laughs> for some reason, they brought a Pitch Perfect 2 poster, and the top half of the poster was Pitch Perfect 1. Oh. But it had 2 on the bottom. Oh. Oh. So that's that's why. I'm glad oh. that was useful in the end. Uh, <laughs> that's just weird, <laughs> man. I've got to say as well, one thing that really winds me up about this scene is, yes, you're a serial killer, and yes, you, you know but do you really have to live like that in that? Yeah. Oh, I, love that. I loved how cheesy it was. It was I mean, like the thing Texas is, we never Chainsaw know Massacre. where these people go, do we, in between stuff. No. I mean, it's like, I know that the Halloween ends, I think they're going to try and explain a bit as to where Michael goes in this time jump. But I, I really loved, I loved <laughs> I really this. like if Michael goes to a nice little condo <laughs> and he's got like a mini bar. He's at the Hilton. <laughs> but it's one of those like 70s mini bars where you, you flip the light switch on it, it's like, duh. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Sunken sofas, shag pile carpets <laughs> yeah. everywhere, yeah. Love it. <laughs> Hopefully it's not like Halloween 5 where he just uh, stays with some random guy at the side of a river who has a parrot. For a yeah. Year. Oh, yeah. I hope yeah. I hope it's like Halloween uh, Resurrection and he just goes to stay with like Tyra Banks and yeah. you know, <laughs> just in a hip-hop house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> When Butcher Millie arrives at school, serving in a red leather jacket and jeans combo, and now she's no longer ugly. Um, <laughs> well, well, no, I suppose it's Butcher Millie now, so it's he now. Um, he ignores Nyla and Josh and takes Bully Ryla to the locker rooms. Ryla thinks uh, Butcher Millie is trying to on with her and informs him that she, <laughs> that she didn't go there to clam jam <laughs> with him before texting a friend to tell her that Millie is a vegetarian. Incredible. <laughs> 
<laughs> I <love> Silas, <laughs> then <laughs> Ryder catches Butcher Body Millie showering in the school showers. Uh, and the butcher kills her by locking her in a uh, cryotherapy tank. Very much a nod to uh, Jason X. But how mm. much money does this bloody school have? I know. Like <laughs> You can tell the difference between America and the UK. Like Obviously, American sport is very yeah. uh, mm. important. Like In the UK, you're lucky to get a football. You're lucky yeah. to have... They literally be like, there's a net. puddle outside that's got a bit of ice in it. So just roll around <laughs> the town. And be like, okay, thanks. <laughs> Well, but fun, funny story, I always tell this story. My school was that poor that we didn't do, like, so for food tech, we had to watch our teacher prepare something and say, pretend that I'm putting this in an oven and it'll be in there for 20 minutes. <laughs> that was, it was either that or she'd wheel out and we'd watch, like, Delia Smith. That was our food tech. We never got to make anything. That's uh, that's so different. Wow. So cool. This is why you're ordering Greg's because you don't know how to cook now. <laughs> God. Oh, Millie finds that's really sad. Actually, <laughs> I'm sure it's well, like, if, you, if we wrote a TV show, that would make a really funny scene. But in like, but also, oh. also in primary in primary school, they couldn't afford enough recorders for everyone. So oh, some of it. So some people had to pret- um, have a ruler, like a wooden ruler, and pretend that they were playing with the on that. I thought you were going to say that you had to share, and I was just like, what? No. <laughs> I was there already showing my deep throating skills at that age, like, oh, you want to share the recorder? <laughs> Go find it. <laughs> Liam, you're not supposed to take the whole recorder in your mouth. <laughs> Every time I cough, it's like, <laughs> Anyway, oh, sorry. <laughs> Apologies for the amount of tangents on yeah. this because you're just trying to get through the story. No, no, I mean I'm I'm thoroughly entertained. I mean I, I want to know more uh, more low budget school stories. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is just getting really emotional about it. I'm just very entertained. <laughs> um, school? No, 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 I didn't actually go to a posh school. I don't know. So, we we did have instruments for everyone. And see instruments. that's that's posh. If you had ovens and you had instruments, yeah. if you had all your windows. <laughs> Just to clarify, Liam, did you have bean bags at least at your school? Was that a thing, or no? What, sit on bean bags? That's no, bougie. As in, as in like the things that you just throw at each other, like in sports. Did you oh, have the bean little, bags? The little yeah, ones. Yeah. Okay. No. Or, or did you have to cut the corners like open and be like beans? They're actually bags of rice. Like my to <laughs> Food tag. She's just raided the, the sports cupboard. We're gonna make beans today, kid. We didn't have a parachute. It was all just like it was just like lost property stitched together. <laughs> oh, those parachutes were so sick. Oh, I don't even think I had a parachute. I think you've outbougied me on that one. And now, only, yeah, I, I don't recall parachutes. The, no, we, par- we didn't. the early parachute for me is Cheryl Cole's single. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I've I've often argued that that's her best song, but Chris doesn't agree. Not true. It's not true. Oh, what do you think? What's what do you think, Chris? Oh my God, what's it called? And I'll make you feel <laughs> when you promise, <laughs> promise this. I like, I know I'm partial to three words. Uh, I like see, three words. It's, oh, that's good. it's that um, Call My Name song, or whatever it is. How did you make me feel when you call my name? <laughs> what I a like the, the, the video, the, the intro, where it's just dun dun, and it's just heels, heels clicking on concrete. Yeah. You're just like, okay, I'm here for it. <laughs> so we just turned into a Cheryl Cole podcast. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, sorry. Cheryl. Cheryl Fernandez. For no, no, no. Oh, no, no. Just Cheryl. Cheryl. <laughs> Cheryl Blank. Uh, do, do you remember when she uh, farted on the X Factor while she giving Cher Lloyd her critiques? Yeah, <laughs> no. Yeah. YouTube it. <laughs> when she did what? Say again. She um, When she was giving Cher Lloyd her critiques on the X Factor one, one of the episodes, she uh, leaned forward and farted. <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't believe our Cheryl's capable of, of passing gas. <laughs> it's too good. Too good. Yeah, YouTube it and and uh, yeah, it'll you won't be able to it's, look at it the same way. It's probably yeah. Well, to be fair, it's probably the only thing she's ever produced that's actually in tune. So. <laughs> <laughs> kind of true. Oh my um, god! Billy, I thought Nicola Roberts was better actually in terms of solo. 
Not Nadine Coyle. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Why don't Flower. you go to work? <laughs> <laughs> I just love listening to Nadine Coyle. Flower. <laughs> It was it was her fake birthday recently, wasn't it? It was well, yeah, her fake birthday. Fa- happy fake fa- birthday. Fa- birthday. Fa- birthday. Fa- <laughs> Making me a Gemini. <laughs> yes, happy fake birthday to Nadine Coyle. Um, <laughs> happy Pride Month, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> We're now a Girls Allowed <laughs> podcast. We're just getting For goodness <laughs> sake. Well, I suppose your podcast is called it has other at the end so i mean this is the exactly. other it's the other, other is girls allowed <laughs> if people listen to our podcast and didn't hear tanya's like this they probably wouldn't listen again although uh, no, one guy did tell us on twitter he skipped our real housewives tangent on the yeah. last episode <laughs> Disgust, <Rude>. disgusting <laughs> oh. um Millie finds Nyla and Josh and uh, proves her identity to them by performing the school's what mascot. Film we watch? <laughs> she performs the dance routine and uh, answers a series of personal questions. Uh, she also tells them about what happened and how she heard the words Lodola after the stab. So they research Lodola and discover that Millie must stab the butcher with the dagger by midnight or else the body switch will be permanent. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Scariest part of the film, Vince Vaughn's cock. Flopping <laughs> I don't find it scary. Not gonna lie. <laughs> I don't mind an older man. So. Well, it's just. <laughs> what? I mean, that's it. No matter if I was to wake up in anyone else's body, no matter whose it is, the first thing I'd be doing, I'd be like, "What's going on down there?" <laughs> I mean, it's just it's just Daphne, isn't it? And Fred yeah. from Scooby Doo. I could look yeah. at myself naked. <laughs> That's but all it is. It's everybody would do that first. Oh, yeah. like, what, like. Right. What what would be a, something that you would do if you were in someone else's body for the day? It depends who's so if you, body. I, I don't know. So say you swapped swapped gender then. So you win. I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to think of like a woman that you'd want to be. I, I don't any, know. I'd, any woman. I'd go, any woman. I'd just Jamie go. Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. I'd, I'd go I'd and just, get those. I think Lindsay Lohan did that. First thing she did was swap places. I mean, going on I, down here then? If I swapped, <laughs> if I swapped bodies with Jamie Lee Curtis, I'd just go on a social media and promote the fuck out of love letters and tell everyone needs to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> just change the world. See, if I was to wake up, I I want to experience um, the female orgasm. That's where I'm at. Yeah. That's where I'm at. I'd I'd just fuck. I'd just yeah. go and fuck Pants yeah. all day. <laughs> Yeah. All day. So when we swap bodies and this person gets the body back and they're like, yay, and they're like, you are riddled. <laughs> <laughs> My back feels well rested. Because <laughs> I've been who riddled. Would I swap with? <laughs> yeah. Sharon from Sanders. Sharon from Letitia Dean. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> no, I'll stay in my own. Thank you very much. <laughs> probably Naomi Campbell, because I think she's oh. the best. And I would just, yeah, I probably would just. Just throw yeah. phones at people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would just be a real bitch. No, I don't, oh, I wait. I'm not going to get into that. That's a real tangent. I, yeah. I, I Mine would, Campbell, I'd swap bodies with whoever um, Henry Cavill's girlfriend is. <laughs> and I'd be like, I'd I'd lock the door and be like, we're not leaving the house today. <laughs> not, not until the until the room smells like gun oil, <laughs> oh. pepper army, and the walls are dripping. You're very specific in these images you conjure, Liam. I must oh say. Oh my god, that's, that's, the, yeah, that's the best body swap choice. Yeah. By the time she gets her body back, it's just she's not going to be able to use it. Pretzel. <laughs> and she's gonna, pretzel. She's going to be like a deflated blow up doll. She's going to be like she's going to be. Oh God! Somebody find me that fucking dagger right now. La dola, la dola, la dola. Um, FYI, that's going to be the episode preview clip for this week. I'm making a note of the time to uh, to take that clip. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so, oh, fuck, where were we? I have no idea. So we just discussed, we were talking about this um, on schlong. She was she was talking about it. It's like a floppy anteater. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. yeah. So they discover that she's got to uh, stab him with the mid- with the dagger by midnight, uh, and then they will reverse bodies. Um, the butcher goes to the woodshop class and kills Mr. Bernardi stabbing him in the neck with a screwdriver and then fucking cutting him in half with a table saw. What a scene. 
Oh, uh, it's incredible. It takes I the also... whole phrase of splitting in two to the next level, doesn't yeah. it, really? Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's how I'm going to be after Henry Cavill. <laughs> 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 but no, this is um, this is possibly my favourite kill of the film. It, I wasn't yeah. expecting it to be that visceral, and it was mm. so, so good. And I really like how brutal the the struggle is at the beginning when um, when he's in this new body and he's like, "Oh, I'm not as strong as I was in my butcher body," um, yeah. but then just leaps through the air in some kind of like weird Jedi lunge, and then <laughs> gets it. And I, I like that. I really like how. The teacher just doesn't hold back as well. It's like I really fucking hate this kid. Oh, Kicking yeah, yeah. the <laughs> shit out of her. her on the floor. I know. I mean, you can argue self-defense at the start, but <laughs> she's yeah. Louise. He was I, waiting for that. <laughs> he really, really. That was a lot of pent up rage. It's all for being late. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad that they didn't shy away though when she does push him through the table, yeah. so like from showing it, because more often than not, like they do just pan the camera away and then it's like blood splatter. Or whatever. It, it made me think of um, that kill that I really like from Fear Street Part One. Do you know, with the, the, is it the bread, bread slicer. Bread slicer. Yeah. 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 Gorgeous. Absolutely yep. gorgeous. Huge respect for that. <laughs> yeah, what got me was the fact that this was a 15 in the UK, because I thought it was going to cut away as well. I thought, oh, they're not going to show that in a 15. I thought, oh, shit, mm-hmm. it's every detail. Though. Absolutely like, everything. Comedy. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. actually played for comedic purposes. Yeah. It's and very violent, it, yeah. but they mm-hmm. get away with it. because I like how you, yeah, you, you sound very Joan Rivers there. It's comedy. <laughs> comedy. <laughs> comedy, for God's sake. <laughs> Um, the butcher spots Millie, Nyla and Josh at the school and points them out to the police who chase them. Uh, they end up hiding at a shop where Millie hides in the changing room, um, where she ends up talking to her mum who gets discount main character. Bonanza. You discount Bonanza. Bonanza. Okay, discount Bonanza. Discount Bonanza. Discount Bonanza. What's wrong with TK Maxx? Discount Bonanza. TK Maxx is a discount. It's a TK Maxx or is it Pep and Co? Pep, oh, I don't know. No, yes. it's not Pep and Co. Mm. So in That's America, it. it's TJ Maxx instead of TK Maxx. It's exactly oh. the same shop. It's so, I don't know why. Very weird. I don't know why they changed the J to a K over here. JK. <laughs> no, do not bring your name up. Thank you very much. Very good. I didn't finish. I did not finish. Usual for me, actually. But... <laughs> You're not doing it right. What was the ending of JK? That's, that's a whole other tangent. What's oh? We're just we're shorting it down. J.K. Rowling's a piece of shit. Well, um, yeah. <laughs> she who shall not be named. Oh, oh, I see. Wait, do oh. you really not know where we're going with that? I've heard J.K. Miss Thing. Who says that? J.K. Miss Thing. <laughs> We, we were actually talking about J.K. Simmons. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, pro- yeah, yeah, prolific yeah, like actor, <laughs> quite sexy for an older man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mustache ride from J.K. heaven. J.K. Jamiroquai was yes. JK. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. Jamiroquai. Love Jamiroquai. And if you're an ex emo slash scene kid from, like I am as well, it's a JK, 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 L O L O L O L. I heart your fucking makeup. Oh my God, I love your hair. Anybody listening out there who's a Medic Droid fan, hit me up. <laughs> it was like, silence. It was like, it was gay emo music. It was incredible. I mean, I'm gonna check it out because I I was the, su- you know, the that song the back in the day. The um the beginning of the song talks about um um this is Chris fucking Donovan uh, which is the person speaking. It's like um sorry I made you cry, Jeffrey Star um when I made oh. you snort a lot of cum out of my ass. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't hold back. Even MySpace profile song. Yeah, <laughs> that was my MySpace <laughs> profile yeah. song. Yes, it was. Yeah. That's what's given. <laughs> <laughs> giving um, Chris Crocker. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Millie's mum gets uh, main character syndrome. Um, they have a very heartfelt chat about her dead husband. Uh, and then she starts wanting to date Millie. Uh, obviously, um, the, the body swap has happened by this point, guys. Don't worry. There's, there's not actual incest going on. Um, but Millie uh, obviously tells her she, she's married and uh, can't go on a date. Uh, that scene ends. Anything to say about it? I'm really annoyed that we didn't get a makeover montage. Mm. Yeah. I, like, I really <laughs> wanted a makeover montage. Yeah. And we didn't get it. We got, like, I don't know, this weird, like, 
rubber mask thing going on. I really I will want... say that bit was hilarious though. But I really hilarious. wanted them to be like, you know, like in a month when he's trying on different clothes, and in the end, they've got him dressed as I don't know. Mrs. Doubtfire or something. That would have been yeah. great. <laughs> yeah. I could have seen that. I, I, I'd have enjoyed that. I'm I think. A girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Slash Mrs. Doubtfire? Uh, well, there we go. Yeah. That's... He's stalking his ex wife. Wait, isn't that just Psycho? Isn't there, there no, is like a, already a trailer, isn't there, that is like Mrs. Doubtfire as a horror movie? And it is yeah, yeah. legit terrifying. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah. it's. I think the whole putting on the mask thing is made into. Like a serial killer getting ready to go out. My favourite bit is the dramatic mu- is the dramatic music when she emerges from the Ooh. from the fridge <laughs> with Hello. the meringue on her face. Hello. <laughs> it was a drive-by fluting. <laughs> oh. um, Butcher Millie is spotted at Grim Mini Golf on an Instagram story. Uh, so no. Uh, Josh um, body find her, find him. Um, with the school's official homecoming cancelled, Butcher Millie suggests a new dance be had at an old mill. That's at place. Uh, one of the football team tries touching him, and we get my favourite line of dialogue in the film, where he says, "Your touch makes this pussy drier than sandpaper, you fucking <laughs> monkey." A round of applause for I that can't line. do it justice, but Catherine Newton just fucking delivers that line so mm-hmm. well. It's so good. I mean, that might have been what Jason Blum gave her to to take yeah. this role. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <dry pussy. laughs> no, the line. Just read this line again. Just read this line. You what can th- say this th- in the th- film. Th- like, th- absolutely. I think this is what, like, she has such a good, like, career waiting for it in the world of horror yeah. i mean there's so many people who deliver lines of dialogue in a certain way i mean you've got this and then you've got like kelly Rowland in <laughs> freddy versus jason whose <laughs> line delivery is just nicely done you're doing it on other people's podcasts now <laughs> oh we're, we're always trying to spread the good word of uh, kelly Rowland in freddy versus jason I've, uh, yeah i've decided i'm getting it tattooed on me are you really? Yeah. <laughs> I what, am. Wait, what, what line? Just the, the whole, no, 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 no. whole monologue. No, I'm not. I'm getting the outline of Freddie standing there and her pointing at Freddie. <laughs> I'm meeting I'm meeting with a tattoo artist in 10 days, actually. Um, you heard then, it here first. This is an exclusive, This is amazing. Guys. <laughs> exclusive. Can't wait. Oh, my Lord. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> I'm not getting it done that day, but going over the design that day. Which okay. Really How are you going to explain it? I, d- I don't need to. <laughs> Somebody's like, oh, oh, do all your tattoos have meaning? I'm like, yeah, I really love it when she calls <laughs> Freddy Krueger a faggot. <laughs> it's probably my favourite thing in the world. <laughs> when, and then when she has the cheek to sing a uh, song like Stole around the same time about bullying. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I've, I've said it before and I'll go on record and I'll say this. When Kelly Rowland released Commander, it was reparation to the gay community for saying the <laughs> F slur in Freddy vs. Yeah. Jason. She was like, I'm really sorry. I am going to release a club banger that you're all going to be bopping to for years to come. And you know what? She wasn't wrong. <laughs> well, we haven't done Freddy vs. Jason yet. We're doing Friday the 13th films on each Friday the 13th. So in Amazing. a few years' time, when we do Freddy vs. Jason... Well, please get me on, please. That. Yeah. Please. yeah. So you can recite that, that entire monologue. I will do, don't worry. <laughs> That's going to be like 2032 or something. Yeah, we're on part five at the moment this year, so it's a while to go. But we'll Hopefully, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll still be alive and, and kick in. Yeah. But... <laughs> Freddy! <laughs> but hopefully, Kelly Rowland will get her on as well. You know, by that point, I mean, that's the, the ambition. Well, I'm speaking of which, does anybody watch Legendary? She was on the latest episode. Oh my god, she looked oh. incredible. She had this great, like, perm. Oh my god, I actually really love Kelly Rowland. So she is fantastic. <laughs> she's, yeah, she's great. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> Michelle was my favorite. Michelle, Michelle never deserves the hate she gets because her voice. Oh, Des- so, I always say in Destiny Child's like discography. Destiny Fulfilled is Michelle's album. It was her album where she got to shine. On every single track, her vocals are flawless, and she gets some of the best. The other has now... It's just girl bands, isn't it, really? <laughs> and that's what it's become. I mean, why not? Ed, what's everyone's favourite member of Bewitched? Let's go. 
Oh, God. Oh, outside. Like? <laughs> Some people say the I one, like Happy The one Dad. who, uh, yeah, the, my favorite is the one at the start of the roller coaster song where she's like, oh, I can't believe I'm doing this. That's, that's my favorite one. Which is that is. I like fight like me dad as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the same one actually. It probably gets all the speaking parts. It's likely the name is Sinead. <laughs> anyway, the Irish one. I like the Irish one. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> the one in denim. The one in denim. Yeah. Is She's it's just told me that um, he makes this pussy drier yes. than Sam Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, he then lures Booker into a uh, mini golf course to kill him. But Butcher Body Millie, Nyla and Josh arrive in time to save the day. And uh, Butcher Body Millie knocks both the Butcher and Booker unconscious. And uh, she and her friends bring them to Josh's house. <laughs> Uh, after t- tying the butcher to a chair, I also, by the way, I love the power that Millie's getting in the butcher's body. Like, mm-hmm. she just puts so little effort into knocking people out. It's great. Mm. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, you can die in violence, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> after tying the butcher to a chair, Millie and Nyla try to explain the situation to Booker, who remains unconvinced until Millie recites a love poem. She anonymously wrote to him a few weeks earlier, and we get into a great line of dialogue where the butcher, as Millie, just turns around and is like, you sad fucking cunt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, and, um, yeah, her in the chair, like, acting yeah. as Vince Vaughn trapped in her body, but acting as her character, acting all, like, helpless and stuff, and yeah. then the switch to you. Yeah. Oh, sad fucking cunt. <laughs> <And> like, <laughs> Gorgeous, absolutely stunning. Booker, Booker. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Josh watches over the butcher whilst uh, Millie, Nyla, and Booker drive to the police station to obtain the Ladola knife. Nyla tricks Shard, the last officer in the station, into leaving so she can steal the dagger. Meanwhile, back at Josh's house, he's watching Countess Luan fall off a camel on TV. (laughs) (laughs) I really, we're getting to one of my favourite bits now, you know, when his mum comes in and he's like, trying to be like, I'm straight. And she's like, honey, you're not straight. (laughs) You're many things, but straight isn't one of them. It's so fucking good. It's so good. Chris, is that one of your favourite Real Housewives moments? It, it is. Yeah, it is. Countess See, Luan I... To stay on camel. It's one of my I'm, not a, I'm not a Housewives person. Like, I, I've watched so many clips, because obviously you can't be a homosexual without at least knowing the <laughs> yeah. clips. Um, one of my favourites is the only thing fake about me is this. With the, the leg. The yeah. leg. <laughs> but also, the I think it's... It's one of the, I think it's, is it the Real Housewives of Melbourne? Have they got an Australian contingent now? Yeah, um, yeah. There's a woman on that who just does not hold back about anything. She is. She calls a kid a dick, doesn't she? Yeah. She, whoever she, she's the reason why, she's the reason why I might, maybe I should start watching a Housewife franchise because she is incredible. She's everything I want to be. But I also love like the taglines, like. Yes. But I'll just, uh, love, I'm trying to think of one now. <laughs> I'm, I may be a cunt, but I lack. I, um, people call me a cunt, but I lack the depth and the warmth. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be mine. <laughs> so awful. Oh. oh my god, we had a real housewife tagline from last week's guest, and it was pretty. Think you may have just raised the bar again. <laughs> I like the idea of keep raising the bar for all of us. <laughs> raising the bar, lowering the tone. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the idea that. of, of um, trying to think of like taglines for all the like, iconic villas, villains. Like, oh, I'm trying to think of one now, but I can't. I've just, I was going to say I've just tapped myself, but I, w- I wouldn't leave the house if that was. <laughs> <a good suggestion. laughs> it looks yeah. so uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so Josh's mum arrives home and asks why Millie is tied to a chair. Um, then that's when we get the great line of dialogue about him not being straight. Um, but the butcher breaks free from the chair and chases them around the house. 
and uh, escapes eventually, whilst uh, Shah catches Nyla stealing the Ladola knife. Um, whilst this is going on, we get a great scene <laughs> outside in the car where Brooker, uh, Booker even, <laughs> reveals that he's always liked Millie. And uh, <laughs> Millie divulges how she enjoys the newfound strength and confidence she feels was in the body. And they kiss. Vince Vaughn kisses a teenage boy. <laughs> All very sus, if you ask me. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I, like, he's he hopeful it... she's going to get her body back in yeah. less than like a few hours. But he feels <laughs> kissing an older I... man is now the time. Yeah, for... I do think yeah. it, is, it is a, br- it's a br- like it had me in stitches. But also I was like, surely they're not. Surely this isn't happening. But it was, you know what? It was actually, I really love that they had the balls to go there with it because mm. that was so yeah. good. Especially like Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn's acting, doing it, yeah. Acting like a lovesick, shy, demure girl yeah. confessing a crush for someone. It's just, it's like, I've never really rated him much as an actor. I'll say that. Like, because obviously I, I can't remember a single film that he's been in. This is the reason why I remember Vince Vaughn now, because I'm like, okay, he's actually really funny. Yeah. 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 And I think for Vince Vaughn, he, it feels like he's playing a young girl and not yeah. playing an effeminate male. Yeah. As yeah. Well, and I think my nerves going into watching the film is that he's just going to play. Liberace, or, or you yes, know, it's, yeah, it's yeah. going to come across as gay rather than you know a young straight girl. So he did well, actually. Yeah, mm-hmm. he did do well. Yeah, to, like to physically as well. Like the way he moved his body through the entire thing, it was such a good, he actually good change. Made it, he actually made it look like it was somebody struggling now to navigate legs yeah. and of somebody who's like six foot when yeah. they used yeah. to be like five. Yeah, I mean, Brilliant. kudos to him. Yeah, like kudos that to must both have been... of them as well because she. She really bodied that when she was like, like it's old Can you imagine man. how fun that must be, like to have a role like that. I mean, yeah, they must have had a whale of a time for sure. See, this is why I'm really yeah. jealous of uh Lindsay Lohan, um, amongst many things. But imagine being like sitting there with Jamie Lee Curtis and being like, right, how sh- how can I be you? Essentially, <laughs> imagine that conversation It'd be insane. Yeah. Just imagine being next to Jamie Lee Curtis. I, I know exactly, exactly. Trauma. I, I would say <laughs> trauma. Have you watched Love Letters? <laughs> yeah, I, that's the first thing I'd ask her straight away. There should be a hit count on this episode of how many times you you mentioned. Could you letters. imagine? Could you imagine if she couldn't remember that film though? Because you could you imagine? Well, I did a film called Love Letters. Imagine how crestfallen you'd be to find that out. <laughs> Do you know what gets me? Around. This is yeah, another another it. tangent. <laughs> but you know the interview uh, where the guy talks about Jason when he, it should be Michael yes. Myers. He's like, so are you terrified of the guy in the hockey mask? And she's like, darling, that's <laughs> that's a different movie. <laughs> Can you imagine getting like, oh, imagine I'd be getting mortified. that wrong. But it's also, um, it's also when people, who was it who got... There's so many instances of it. it. Oh, I was watching something the other day. Oh, that was it. Somebody was um, talking to... Ch- it was an interview with Charlie XCX, and they thought she was a lord. Oh, yeah. She just goes <laughs> the So I was born in New Zealand, and... <laughs> just like, oh, my God. I'd do totally the same, to be honest. Just troll the shit out of them. Was the interview with German? Because I think Charlie it was. XCX thinks she's bigger in Germany than she, she does. actually is. I love it. <laughs> Sing this fucking song. song. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Wow. Um, We're just walking memes at this point, aren't we? (laughs) If you get a bunch of gays together, the one thing we're going to do is we're going to pull pop culture references out of our asses, (laughs) aren't we, really? So. I'm surprised you, you can pull anything out again, after Henry so. Cavill, to be honest. But I mean, there's enough room in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, so Millie sees the butcher entering the police station and runs in after him. Uh, Sean tries to detain her, and uh, Millie ends up overpowering her and locks her in a jail cell, whilst butcher Millie escapes in a police car. At Blissfield uh, Valley High homecoming dance uh, at the butcher's mill, the uh, butcher kills three jocks who corner him, planning on sexually assaulting him. Yeah. Um, 
great way of bringing this in to where it didn't feel exploitative or unnecessary, just like kind of raising yeah. the issue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, what they they say? Can you do math, Millie? The way I see yeah. it, you were three holes, and this adds up. Yeah. So definitely in the good for her cinematic universe. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, Even it links in with the fact they had to just establish these guys as basically Arseholes, people to be yeah. off straight away. Yeah. Yeah. They? And they get off them. Glorious fashion. fashion. We also yeah. need to say as well, going back to Millie, Millie did get in a cop car and try to run down a gay man. So maybe the rumours are true about Millie. <laughs> Bobby Brown. <laughs> <laughs> she floored it. <laughs> she floored it when she saw the homosexual. <laughs> Incredible. Sorry, but yes, that's a sexual assault, that lovely subject. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, we get a bottle over the face, uh, a slit throat with the smashed bottle. One mm. of them gets cut in half with a chainsaw. Oh, but it's the Glorious. chainsaw in the dick for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. Now, that's something I think the camera should have stayed on a little bit longer. Well, it was it was really <laughs> invocative of all those, like, because my, probably my least favourite subgenre of horror is revenge. Mm. Uh, well, specifically when it's sexual assault, revenge films. I'm yeah. talking like I Spit on Your Grave and stuff like that. They, they're they not my cup of tea at all because usually they are written from, you know, f- completely through the male gaze. Um, apart from, I think I struggled to see the point of them, to be honest. Yeah. Whereas this but, one, I really, yeah. I, really I, I feel like I, it, it gave a lot of agency to the character. So yeah. I yeah. really did enjoy it. And that chainsaw through the dick is just fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We say it a lot on the podcast, a lot of these rape revenge films and films that we've covered that use rape as a plot line, Mm. um, they never deal with it fully and therefore it sort of makes it not as important as it should. It's always, it's just a plot, it's used as a plot device, which is why I, um, there's one film in particular there's one that I do like, and I believe it's called Revenge. Uh, yeah, was, I was going to say, I like it that. It was written, directed by a woman. So it was, you know, it it gave a lot of agency to carry. It wasn't just a, let's put this person through the worst thing ever, because it's not just horror who does this. I'm looking at you, Game of Thrones, where mm. we did not see, need to see that Sansa Stark scene at all. Harrowing, harrowing. You, it doesn't need to be shown, and that's what I'm really glad they didn't show it with this. They... I don't think they needed to. I mean, literally, that line of dialogue was all you needed to realize yeah. that's the territory we were in, and mm-hmm. this is what's going to happen. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't. I have a real problem with those films, uh, if I'm being honest, right. just because I think, yeah, like you shouldn't have to use sexual assault as a justification for a woman having to get a kind of fight disgusting pieces of shit man yeah. <laughs> um it's it, it just i don't know it bothers me i think i feel the same about a lot of torture porn films as well yeah. like um hostile i really i really don't get at all the point i think saw has a bit more of a story to it um but oh, I, I, I struggle to see the entertainment while you do not summon them please don't summon <laughs> don't summon those straight men who's like actually jigsaw <laughs> didn't kill anyone so he's not oh, so- I- <laughs> <Fuck her. laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> oh, I so hate them. Kind of those two subjects kind of merge into something I was going to ask, actually. So did you, did you both see Promising Young Woman? I haven't seen it yet, unfortunately. No, sorry. I've heard great things about it, though. Fantastic. It, you know, some people, it, it kind of falls into the rape revenge. I think, genre, again, that's by, it's directed and written by a woman, though, isn't it, as well? Directed and written by a woman. Yeah. What we were saying earlier about the differences between straight and queer audiences, you know, obviously that had a really big um, queer following and, and I, you know, obviously I don't think every straight person hated it, but one thing I noticed in reviews was a lot of straight people were saying it's a horror film. Mm. It's not a horror film. I wouldn't find that, I wouldn't say that's a, a horror film, would you? No, no. But it, it was kind of weird the way that... I mean, it's, it's uncomfortable subject matter yeah. for a general audience. Yeah. I mean, you're not showing it to you know um kids or anything like that it's definitely for a yeah, age yeah. audience yeah um, but it's it, it, i don't know if anyone's watched the accused with jodie foster yeah yeah and uh, i feel like the the scene in question the rape scene is very much a big part of that film mm-hmm. but i appreciate how the film is about how she deals with that so it, mm. it shows it and it could be you know said it's for shock purposes 
but because the film deals with how she deals with that ordeal mm -hmm. I think it's more valid whereas in a lot of these films and I am saying I, I spit on your grave is the big one mm. where it just it doesn't deal properly with the subject matter no. so it feels exploitative yeah oh yeah definitely, definitely for sure yeah it's, it's it's a shame I think they're certainly the corners of the genre that I I dislike the most and I think unfortunately that's sometimes what gives the genre a bad name in a lot of ways because I mean particularly with slashers as well and obviously this is I would characterize it as, as a slasher by all means a lot of it people on face value think horror is just slashers and it is just damsels in distress big breasted women screaming and getting slaughtered by some sexually confused or repressed male um in a mask with a knife and I, I suppose that's what this was trying to comment on wasn't it for sure yeah. this film it was taking all of those things and twisting it and making it queer and making it um yeah unique in many ways yeah also, we fucking hate Hostel as well. So oh my god, I hate it, 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 oh my It's god. just so pointless. I saw a clip of it come up in like a montage thing about horror the other day, and it was the bit where um, she gets like her eyeball blow torched off. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I just, I, I've kind of sat through them to say that I've watched them, and I spent. I'm sure it was something I was doing at uni. We were talking about that aspect of horror, like post 9/11. And I get it. I get that people were seeing like stuff in the news, like people getting beheaded, like by far east like governments and all of this but it's just so pointless to me there's just no entertainment i just think it brings out the worst in people and it's it's that yeah. that film in particular as well is not aged i mean it, it wasn't it didn't age well at the time but it's not aged well the amount of like casual homophobia in that film and i know oh, i know that it's supposed to be like two dude bros and all this stuff but it's just like really evocative of that evocative of that time period mm. and those type of people yeah. i just it's not my it's not my cup of tea i watched it a, um a couple of months ago because i was like you know what i've not seen hostel since i was like a teenager mm. let's people always stick it on a it'll always be on a list somewhere of you know watch this film if you like and i was yeah. like i'm just i'm not having a i'm not having a good time and mm. it's it is films like that and i've said it previously on our podcast it's like those type of films where it is torture porn and i'm talking about like cannibal holocaust and human centipede and um so oh god serbian i haven't even even given just, that guy i because I, I i know enough about it but it's it's it. it's not it's not just the films it's the fans of those films that yeah. I, I don't like who were, like because i um we did this real I, I did like a really nice post not long ago and we did this like vhs stack nice i was asking people what they feel like is a really good um if you were to somebody who's never really gotten into the horror genre before, what would you introduce them to? And this lad was like, oh, I'd just go straight with like the the proper horror films, the you know like Serbian film and kind of. And I was and I was just like, I'm not even going to engage with you because you, I like, I don't, I just don't get the the point of it. Like it's there's there's no entertainment to it i don't really particularly find those sorts of films there's scary either i don't find them scary um but when it comes to literature there are some great um there are some great authors out there who do like splatterpunk and all that like, i'm looking at uh if anybody's read anything by eric larocca who did um things have gotten worse since we last spoke um is incredible at doing like extreme horror but everything seems poignant mm -hmm. really poignant like it has these extreme this extreme imagery and extreme things happen. It doesn't get to the extent of stupid shit like human centipede or whatever, but it's got, it's got meat behind it on top of all that. It's not just there. I'm also looking at Nick Cutter. Uh, Nick Cutter also um, did um, the troop and did the deep. Um, the deep was one of the few books that absolutely terrified me, um, but does extreme horror, but there's always poignancy behind it. There's a story there. There's a real, real heart mm. to it, as well as all this horrendous stuff. And it's not mm -hmm. just let's put people through. Let's just do it so we can just gross people out straight mm. away. Yeah. Anyway, I'm so sorry for that tangent, but no, I am. No, no, it's, 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 a... it's one thing that it really gets on my tits when people <laughs> yeah. people are like oh these are the uh, like this is real horror this and i'm like you've seen that bullshit iceberg thing where it's like oh these are the most disturbing films yeah. don't watch yeah. the no shut the fuck up really like yeah. someone was really stupid mm -hmm. um, and someone 
someone came to me um, <laughs> and uh, messaged me um, on Instagram. So, oh, well, I'm trying to watch all of the iceberg films, uh, and they're not even that disturbing. I'm not even scared. Oh, I, don't, I don't give a shit. That's how I like it. Iceberg films. You know, you've not seen the iceberg chart where it's oh, like yeah, the most so. disturbing film. Yeah, it goes go into like a lot of weird found footage stuff. Snuff stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is if, if this is what you're into and you don't care about being entertained or having a plot or the mm-hmm. film actually saying anything about anything, then just watch One Man just... One Jar on a loop or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you say that like I don't or I do that, that but okay. <laughs> Watch it right now. <laughs> I'm actually on a jar. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I wouldn't even categorize it as horror. I just think it's an insult to the genre. Uh, I mean, this this film is paying homage to like the classics that really set out a lot of the archetypes, the tropes, and and conventions we love to see. Um, and for me, obviously, yeah, this is comedy horror, but it's horror uh, in in a great great way. The other stuff, it just it can just do one. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but getting back to Freaky, one of the jocks <laughs> takes Josh to an empty room and uh, says that he knows where Millie is. He tries kissing him, but Josh pushes him away. Um, yeah, is I this mean, not what Josh wanted. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I thought this. I mean, good on him for prioritising his friends, but like yeah. this was the whole point of him being there initially. <laughs> I've got to say as well. Um, they managed to get that all set up, like that whole homecoming dance set up in such a short it's amount of time. It's the same though with all of these films. It's isn't so it? impressive. That, them, that's what makes the film gay. You know for a fact it was the gays who did <laughs> the that. The event planning. And the one thing we're gonna do is we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna make an event, throw a party. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the jock meets his comeuppance when uh, Butcher Millie punches through a wall and stabs him through the overhook. Oh, I mean, the weapon changes as well in this really film. The the hook, yeah. the chainsaw, the kitchen knife, the Lodola. <laughs> it's just, yeah. and it's like, brilliant. It just come out of nowhere as well. Like very Friday the Thirteenth. Like these, these weapons just like, weird out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I feel like <laughs> e- <laughs> even even then when she then stands there with the hook waving mm. waving it like that again reminded me of Candyman. So it was just like yeah. just a lovely. Oh, I just. I love it when it's not too in your face, when it's not, I'm looking at you, five cream, when you're like, <laughs> when it's just so on the nose, like, and it's yeah. just like, you're slapping me over my, the head with references and stuff. Whereas this was just like a nice little subtle nod, which I really enjoyed. Mm. And even the location as well, you know, the fact that it was a wall in a rundown place that had been graffiti, that had graffiti on it as well. Yeah, and they chose that for a scene where they're referencing Candyman. Mm-hmm. That's a really nice touch, you know, mm. especially given where yeah. Candyman hides out in the film and whatnot. Oh, I was getting, I know what you did last time. Were you? I, <laughs> I saw that too, but then thinking about it with the graffiti emerging through a hole in the wall, it's all yeah. very Candyman. Yeah. I am, but I will say, while we're quickly on the subject, Helen Shivers dis- should have been the final girl of that film. That's all I'm going to say. Helen Shivers <laughs> deserved better. Just, just, just for Helen Shivers. Sam account, uh, yeah. Sam podcast, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. No, I think. Wait. <laughs> no, I love Helen Shivers. What? Are you sure? But she definitely <laughs> had to die because she was the she, she was the heart of the film. Like really. Well, I just I mean, don't. Th- I just don't you think to, you have to have someone who cared about dying. No, I I don't feel Frank like Prince Sarah Michelle Gellar ever de- she deserves to die. <laughs> oh, everybody who was involved in the sequel and then other sequel of those films deserved to die. We'll yeah. say that. <laughs> Brandy deserved to live. And she did. <laughs> I love Brandy. Brandy was my favourite growing up. I love Brandy. But we also but got Jack Black did... with dreadlocks, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. There's the horror. <laughs> As midnight approaches, uh, Millie finds the butcher and both Nyla and Josh hold him down whilst uh, Booker staves off the police. Butcher, uh, body Millie's alarm goes off, indicating that she's too late to reverse the body. But thankfully, there was a scene earlier on the film that explained about setting your watch five minutes ahead. I knew I put it in bold (laughs) in my notes for a reason. (laughs) (laughs) 
And Millie stabs the butcher with Ladola and they switch back to their own bodies just in time for the police to shoot down the butcher. Wow. Shoot, what does it, is it like, shoot that fucking asshole? And it's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, it's really reflective of how America are just like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, literally just nothing. <laughs> <laughs> could have surrendered at that point, but they were like, nope, <laughs> we're just going to shoot him. <laughs> Twelve men wearing glasses, come, uh, sunglasses come out of their trucks with their rifles and start shooting. <laughs> did you mean us? <laughs> what did you mean? Um, later, Maga Millie... Caps. Is it MAGA? Yeah, make America yeah. great again. Yeah. <laughs> Make America great again. Buckers. Oh. <laughs> yeah. reunite and they kiss it again. We all think it's a happy ending when they do realize do it. The butcher has faked his death, follows Millie home and attacks her, mocking her physical weakness and anxiety. Uh Millie, Shart, and their mother struggle to overpower the butcher, but Millie finally kills him by impaling him with a broken table leg. Great, great scene. Like seeing the three of them all gang up on him. Yeah, it's such. it's very yeah. Reboot. Yeah. Really really about about so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The thing I realise is uh, is not having balls is a positive thing, isn't it? That's the message. <laughs> Fuck the man. <laughs> By, Why um, not? Yeah, it's really um, really invoked like the idea of like what they were doing with the Halloween reboot uh, with like the Strode women coming together yeah. with this. But not 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 as executed as well. I'm not saying it was no. bad, but like that was. I mean, I, yeah, I, the closing the closing 15 minutes, I think, of Halloween 2018 are like my favorite like bits of that film, and that yeah. whole bit where Karen pretends she's yeah. Oh, it's it's oh. The, it's the switch for me. It's the switch from my oh, gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> Oh, I, I mean, I think that's what yeah. they were trying to do with this. Yeah, but uh, it's it's still it. I got that like it invoked the feeling of that, so I was still like, yeah, fuck yeah, all ganged up <laughs> on him. Go on, get him. Yeah, <laughs> Have another glass and of wine, man. The film ends on Millie saying, "I am a fixed team." That's the film. That is freaky. Yeah, that is. That is. What are our closing thoughts on Freaky? Um, a lot more fun Tarted, than I think. Brilliant, I... incredible, amazing. <laughs> Never been seen before. <laughs> Shit on it. Shit on it. Never been seen before. <laughs> Unafraid to reference or not reference. Put in a blender. <laughs> Shit on it. Vomit on it. Eat it. Give birth to it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't have said it better. To, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. I um yeah I really I, know. <laughs> I really it's it's nice though because I feel like um. We haven't had, I feel like there was, slashers had become um, one of two things. It was either like cheaply made and they're just trying to do it just just to do a slasher film or it was a continuation of a retro slasher. So it's mm. it was yeah. nice to have some some like life injected into the genre. The last time I watched, um, that was technically I'd, I'd class it as a, as a slasher film, is the last time I felt this way about one was... Um, is it your next? Mm. Yes. Yeah. Your next. Yeah. And um, what's the other one that I really like with Samara Weaving in? Um, Ready or oh, Not. Ready or Not. Ready or yeah. Not. Oh yeah. my God! What a film. Yeah. I think there's a really unique thing happening here with obviously they're almost devising like a slasher subgenre with the fact that they're remixing these slashes with like these other ideas. So obviously we've got the Groundhog Day, Happy Death Day. Mm -hmm. We've we've got the Freaky Friday with this, and you mentioning the Back to the Future kind of mix up that there's going to be as well yeah. I, I i mean i'd be happy to see them continue to do this for I'd a like while them, thinking on it now i'd like them to do like some of the john hughes films um mm. like 16 candles yes. um pretty in pink and stuff like that i'd really like to see that i want basically i want not another team movie but a slasher <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd, I'd be down for that yeah. isn't he awesome. he's moving on to he's doing the arachnophobia reboot isn't he next, oh. the, the yeah, next yeah. Thing? Yeah. so so maybe it yeah. might be a little while before we, we i will not i will not be watching and i'm i'm sure it's going to be great but i won't be watching um i will genuinely shit and piss myself watching that <laughs> shit on it piss on it <laughs> give birth to it <laughs> amazing i i, I yeah, mean i, I do love i love this film though i will say it's a lot mm -hmm. funnier and a yeah. lot more entertaining Absolutely. than i think i thought it would be 
um and it was a pleasure revisiting it for for this episode it really was yeah um i as i said i I'd, I'd watched it like, like maybe once or twice before and then it wasn't until I watched it I was like I'm I'm having so much fun watching this now mm. um and it's it's just I know it's it's still quite recent to say that it's aged well as well it's just like it's just it, it does feel like it's one going to be one of those films that is going to be like a timeless classic for people to go back to and watch um yeah. and I absolutely would it would be one of those films where I'm like if somebody is like oh, I want to watch a horror film but like um, I've never really watched that many horror films before, and I'm like, well, if you watch this, you're a fan of this genre of film, like Mean Girls, etc., like that. Mm-hmm. Watch this, and then from that, you can get the references from it, and you can go away, and you can watch Candyman, you can go and watch Scream, you can go and watch these. Then and just think. I think the comedy eases people into it as well. It's like I know for yeah. fact I watched Shaun of the Dead, for example, before I watched like Dawn of the Dead and the zombie, the yeah. real zombie films. Yeah, and that kind of almost wet my palate and made it kind of a bit easier for me to see people getting ripped apart by zombies. So I watched, <laughs> this will yeah. do the same for slashers. I watched Scary Movie 2 before I watched any of the, like, the haunting Hill House franchises, um, yeah. which is a bad thing because I wanted them all to be like Scary Movie 2. I was, basically, <laughs> I just want, I want Brenda. Yeah. Brenda Disappointed Brenda wasn't in everything, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, it, it is it's a fantastic modern horror comedy, and it is great to see so many slasher films coming back now and everything, you know, mm-hmm. trying to recapture what made slashers so great in the first place. It's definitely one of those genres that can stand the test of time, yeah. and it still works mm-hmm. in a modern sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and the film is very, it's not very 2020, because we all know what 2020 was, it's very 2019, <laughs> um, yep. you know, and things going on the Instagram, and, you know, everyone updates on their Phone, but still manages to keep that quintessential slasher yeah. vibe. Yeah. So it works, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you're a fan of Freaky, let us know on social media. We're Horacle Trash over on Facebook and Instagram, Horacle Trash on Twitter. I'm Delight Gaz92 on Letterboxd, Gazmo205 on Instagram, GazCruise92 on Twitter. Please don't message me with your horror icebergs. I oh, know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Chris Barker eight two three on Instagram and Letterboxd. And if you're feeling generous, please don't message me at all. (laughs) (laughs) Give us a five stars on iTunes and all the usual shit we say every week. Um, (laughs) uh, Yeah. So thank you so 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 much for joining us, there, queer. We had the best time uh, discussing this film and many. Many different subjects. Yes. <laughs> it went places, didn't it, this episode? So it, it, either you're welcome or we apologise. <laughs> Good luck editing this um, one. No, it, was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, can you tell people where they can find you? Yes, go on, Liam. Oh, because I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm no, silent. Don't give you address. Silence. Grinder. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm in Coventry. I'm five metres away. Yeah. Uh, um, no, I'm, abs- I'm absolutely dreadful at um, plugging social media things because I can never remember my own handles or anyone else's. He's the uh, Carrie White of social media plugging. That's that's what he's trying to say. Plug it up. You can find us on Instagram at Their Queer Podcast and uh, Twitter. It's just Their Queer. Um, if you want to follow us individually um, I'm at Liam B Creative on social media uh, if you want to say your handles because I think yours are different on Twitter and... I'm Liam James 191 on Instagram and Liam underscore James underscore on Twitter I believe if I've got those wrong then just follow the podcast instead I was going to say if you listen to a <laughs> podcast episode it's usually, usually and, down below um yeah, the same with us. Uh, listen to us. Give us nice ratings everywhere. Engage with us. Um, and also, send us your grinder horror stories. Send us your hookup <laughs> horror stories, please. If you if you have a horror story, like everyone has one, but if you've got one and you can remain completely anonymous, um, send them to us. I have so much fun reading them out, um, and I just have fun engaging with people after I've read it. And like, I'll always send someone a message saying. Just a heads up, your story is featured on this month's episode. And then afterwards, they're like, thank you for doing it justice in the dramatic reading. (laughs) You're very welcome. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, if if anyone's uh, visited the shed in Coventry, the postman's shed, let them know. (laughs) (laughs) Please do. I'm heading there um, right now. If you get an anonymous, (laughs) not from me. Well, um, Uh, so, yeah. 
<laughs> I would like to like extend the invitation to yourselves to come on uh, to our yeah, podcast as well. We'd sure. really love to have you on. Obviously, we'll um, we'll discuss that off the air about you know yes. possibilities of uh, what we could talk about. But yeah, we'd love to have you on. It's been such a so much fun today. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And we will be back next week. But before that, we'll be back on Friday. Be back on with, Friday, end of the month. Yeah, with our Hairspray Original versus Remake episode. Ooh. I'm so excited. <laughs> I mean, what happens is Christmas Pride, man. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and, uh, next Tracy, week we'll eat your donuts. <laughs> <laughs> next week, we'll be back with our final Pride Month episode for this year. We'll be discussing Killer Condom with the Horror Bandwagon podcast. Yeah. Incredible. Ding for her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We will be back same time, same place on Friday. Bye. 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 <laughs>